guys. I'm not a public speaker. I am a technologist, um, but I'll try and explain in 10 minutes as fast as I can what Dimonium actually is. You see here that um, on the stage, uh, Dimonium is a global peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system. That is exactly what Bitcoin uh, in their uh, white paper wanted to be, uh, a digital cash system. We all know today that basically Bitcoin is not a digital cash system, correct? Yep. So what we're about is basically we have a mission. Uh, what we'd like to be is basically a usable cryptocurrency. That's the mission statement, if you want to read it. Uh, but we want to be a cryptocurrency that, that is used by the average person. That's really important because the whole premise or the promise, I should say, of cryptocurrency was that we would have usability around it, that it would become a digital cash system. That has not happened, not with Bitcoin. It hasn't happened with ma any of the cryptocurrencies that are out there. We have created a financial sector, but we have not created a commercial sector. So we are what we call classify as a fourth generation cryptocurrency. If you haven't heard fourth generation, you've probably heard a lot about third generation cryptocurrency. And third generation is pretty much uh, where we have reached the point where we are fast, scalable and economic enough to actually go to market, uh, which was the vision of Satoshi. Uh, fourth generation is when you add other things outside the box to blockchain technologies like artificial intelligence. I've been fortunate in that space because I've worked for the last seven years in that area and uh, getting involved in blockchain technology has only heightened that. We're also a hard fork of Ethereum. Is anybody here owns Ethereum? Okay. So Ethereum's had a bit of a bashing. Um, we've had all the third generation coins coming in. Uh, the technologies are fast and scalable and they do not waste the electricity of uh, Lebanon. Um, and at the end of the day, we have uh, a currency that we think uh, maybe Bitcoin is owned 95% by institutions, but Ethereum is still owned a lot by the tech community and it has a very large community. And I think it really the technology is under attack um, from uh, companies or uh, cryptocurrencies like EOS and NEO and uh, all the rest of them that are out there. 95% um, of Dimonium um, will be owned by basically Ethereum. So if you're an Ethereum owner, you pretty much already own Dimonium. Congratulations. Um, we aim to be government compliant in all jurisdictions. The purpose of that is that if you're not government compliant, we know over the next few years there's going to be a cleansing. Um, there's no point setting up a cryptocurrency if you're not going to comply with government rules and regulations. And so uh, we need to be government compliant. But at the same time, uh, we want to be private. Uh, how that works is we've achieved that. Uh, private meaning that your next door neighbour cannot see how much money you've got in your bank account. It doesn't contravene any of the privacy laws uh, that are coming out, as you probably know in Europe and many others. Um, uh, we need to be private. And I think all the currencies that will become private in the future, they're the ones that are going to remain. Uh, but at the same time, you need to be government compliant, not private and anonymous, um, only to your next door neighbours. We needed to create a, co a, a currency that had commercial stability because, as you all know, volatility uh, in the markets, if you're going to have a usable cryptocurrency, then you need to create a currency that basically you're not arriving to buy a car and it's gone down $5,000 and, oh, I don't have the money anymore. So we need commercial stability for usability. And so we've created a system for that, where whatever you've got inside your wallet, it is a stable currency. Um, and you can find out more about that. I've only got a few minutes. So we also can run other smart coins and assets like Ethereum. Of course, we would not uh, put on a thousand tokens and rubbish tokens uh, that basically would just uh, bring a bad reputation or bring government authorities uh, and the focus onto the Dimonium network, because I think that would be responsible. We are a currency. We're not, a, we're not basically uh, you know, some uh, system where uh, you can launch, uh, let's say, uh, whatever, you know, selling furniture off it. Um, so we are a smart asset. 
Um, and we have our first asset that's actually launching, which is AI Property. Uh, AI Property is also a sister uh, currency, but it runs off the Daimonium blockchains. And, um, and what is AI Property? I think you'll can find out later about that. We also have another gold currency that's actually launching off it as well. We're open source, we're uh, decentralized, we reward contributors, we run as a virtual co-op on, on the blockchain. Uh, we're probably, that I know, the first banking, decentralized banking system that runs as a virtual co-op, means not a stakeholder system, but rather basically a one member, one vote, one node, one vote system. Uh, like a cooperative, so just think of it as a virtual cooperative. We are not a business, we are not a company, we are no different to basically Bitcoin. It's what the law requires us to be in the US and many others. So we are just a decentralized autonomous system. There is no company, there is a foundation. Um, if you own coin, great, uh, that's the same as Bitcoin. Uh, but there is no company behind this. We're not a commercial driven uh, company. We aim to be just another decentralized network like um, uh, Bitcoin. Having said that, uh, Bitcoin came in with a promise, like I said before, one cent transactions, any amount, anywhere in the world. Uh, obviously, it uh, uh, put uh, uh, became competitive for Western unions and all the digital currencies that were out there. Um, unfortunately, it has not actually worked out that way. Um, like I said, it's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. We've got a big cross on that. I first heard about Bitcoin in 2009. I downloaded the software, had a check, downloaded the white paper, read it. I put a big cross on it myself. I thought decentralization was not going to work. So <laughs> there's one person here that basically did not believe in that concept. I do believe now, but you know, it's taken us a decade later with 100,000 engineers to make it work. Um, I was not one of those original people that put the tick on it. Um, but nevertheless, um, uh, I also did not believe that the, um, the software system could actually do what it said it was going to do back at that time. And I wasn't going to put my time into it, but it obviously, in the last decade, you've had hundreds and thousands of people that have contributed to this, and here we are today. So uh, this is before and after, a decade later. Uh, Bitcoin says uh, fast peer-to-peer -peer transactions. It just changed the website to peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Uh, low processing fees, of course, $28 average is not a low processing fee and it's not really competitive with the banking systems. And then you've got Ethereum who added the smart contract cryptocurrency. We need to be a smart contract cryptocurrency. We need to have smart transactions, I believe, uh, not just financial transactions. Uh, but we also believe and take advantage of the fact that 95% of global transactions, uh, the code for those smart transactions can be reused and they can be validated. So if you're buying a house or you're buying a motorbike or whatever it is, uh, you can reuse that code. You don't need to keep programming and have it open. And of course, that's created a lot of problems out there with uh, the programming. So here we are, a new global digital cash system, Daimonium. Uh, the idea is that it is technologically superior to scale globally, and it's usable for the average person. When we look at our um, technical ability. Uh, you will see here that basically Daimonium against Ethereum, uh, our transactions are under three seconds. Visa card uh, does up to 2,400 transactions a second. Uh, if Ethereum or Bitcoin were doing that, they'd use the electricity of the planet. Uh, we can scale up to about 100,000 transactions. Our fees are only one cent. Uh, one cent is relevant to its country of operation. And of course you have um, Bitcoin at 45 minutes, 4.49 minutes, Bitcoin Cash, a fork, uh, Litecoin and the rest of it. They really don't compare much. Ripple's a different thing altogether uh, because Ripple is really a wholesale system for banks. Uh, good luck if they make it. Uh, we'd like to become a wholesale system for countries uh, because it's ownerless uh, and it's scalable. And if you were to take all the digital transactions of the planet at the moment, they'd go up to about 110,000 transactions per second. So our technology is up there. So why are we forking Ethereum? Does anybody here not know what a fork is? That's okay. A fork is when you take basically uh, the ledger or the account system of a currency and you transplant it on a different software platform. 
and that's called a hard fork. And we are hard forking Ethereum, and that's why 95% of Dimonium is already owned by the Ethereum network. Um, we're doing that because of the electricity that it wastes. We believe that uh, that's not acceptable. Maybe for Bitcoin it is, but for other currencies, no. Um, and of course, uh, Ethereum is too slow and costly. Uh, it can't scale up to be like Visa card. A new third generation competition, of course, is going to give it a run for its money. We have already have EOS with boxing gloves on as the Ethereum killer. Now we're biting at its legs. Uh, so I guess Ethereum, um, you know, is at the state where it actually wants to fork itself. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about that, but the owner or the founder, Vitalik, uh, he's actually thinking of forking himself. And that hasn't happened in our industry before. <laughs> no, that's not a joke. It's serious. Uh, okay. Um, and, th and Ethereum, of course, is a forkable currency, and so a lot of the first generation currencies, and that means there's more risks of more forks and attacks on Ethereum. And Ethereum, of course, is not government compliant. It really doesn't have any intentions to be that way. It's still in the altruistic state of we'll take down, uh, you know, and be anonymous, and uh, the governments don't control, but they do. Uh, and I don't think I want to go up against any of the governments. I don't know about you guys, but if you invest in a cryptocurrency, I think that you want to make sure that it's government compliant. Um, and of course, Ethereum is not private and may breach some laws. So our coin is secure, it's simple, it's speedy, it's scalable, it's smaller fees than the banks, and of course, it's social. Our app has to be easy, and it is. And the way that we operate is no different to a PayPal or anything that's easy out there in the market. Um, and of course, the most important thing is to take it to the market where you can actually trade with it, because if you're not trading with it, then the whole promise of the whole industry, it means nothing. And uh, if you know now that uh, in the last couple of months, uh, Bitcoin was 36% um, of the market, and now it's risen to past 50% of the market, and it's still going up. A lot of the tokens, I believe, are going to get wiped out over the next couple of years. A lot of them should not even be tokenized. A lot of those token systems should not have even been decentralized because they don't need a decentralized model. So the objective for us is to become the most usable. We don't do mining. We don't need it. Uh, that's a game uh, that was started off uh, 10 years ago. Good for Bitcoin, but we don't need mining. Uh, we basically uh, propagate ourselves uh, in the marketplace through rewarding businesses that join, uh, users that join up, and people who refer other people, and so forth and so forth. So um, you can find out more about that. We also believe that the future of retail currency is actually upon us. We are now not in a state where we are looking at technology to be viable, that we can actually go to market. We can already go to market. It's a decade later. And so whilst we're here and the technology is here, in other words, the promise of the future is here, now we have to do the job. And so the future of retail currency, um, we're holding an event for that. Um, we're holding three events, but one major event in Europe. Uh, we have booked basically an Olympic stadium. Um, if you go to the Dimonium website, you will basically find very shortly uh, a lot about the fork event. It's going to be one special event, and it's going to showcase what the future of retail currency actually looks like, uh, because that's what we're all about. We want to take this to market. We've got good teams, good people. We've got a lot of business acumen behind us. We understand how to propagate things into the marketplace. But most importantly, we are Bitcoin in a sense, um, in a technologically superior, but we are Bitcoin in a sense. We are a decentralized autonomous system. If you join our group, the system will pay you. Uh, it'll pay you more than what your corporate jobs uh, will pay you. And um, of course, you can find out more about the Fork event as well. Um, there's a stadium, uh, largest crypto event. And this is our first uh, global property blockchain um, that's going to run off the Domonium blockchain. And this is really, have you heard of RP data? Anybody? So it's real estates are giving data to uh, central authorities, uh, and then they're selling it back to them. And so what we're doing is decentralizing data. Data is a great system for the blockchain. Uh, it was part of the reason why we got involved in the cryptocurrency in the first place. So thank you very much. And